Well, we finally got a coaching hire. The Indiana Pacers have gone out and hired Nate Bjorken, a, a popular assistant coach. We've talked about the Pacers a lot, Corey. You, I like. Do you like this hire for them? I mean, they're going for that Nick Nurse, next big thing kind of coach. Yeah, and, and I look at look at his pedigree, right? You know, he won at basically every level, um, even back when he was coaching high school, state of, coach of the year in Arizona. And then he goes to the G League, and everyone seems to really love him as a player development coach. Uh, he worked with T.J. Warren, who's one of the rising stars of the Pacers. And then you look at the Pacers kind of core group. They have talent. They don't necessarily have a superstar. The question is, can Ola, Oladipo be that superstar, um, especially coming back from an injury? I don't know. But I think ultimately, if you want to get past this first round sweep and get to the next level of saying, hey, we're, we're happy to make the playoffs. Now we're actually going to win some games. I think you go, you go uh, with the pedigree of the Nick Nurse uh, coaching tree. Yeah, I think that this is a nice. Look, he has the reputation as a really good teacher around the league, like as a coach who's a really good teacher and as a good tactician, which kind of makes sense coming out of that Nick Nurse background where, I mean, they ran 47 different defenses every game and they threw a lot of stuff at you, but like it takes a certain kind of coach to be that adaptable. Bjorkman can be that kind of guy. I think, though, you touched on the real key with this team. Victor Oladipo, do you? He's got one year left at twenty-one million dollars on that deal. Are you keeping him and betting he can be that guy, or are you testing the trade market for him? I, I would test the trade market. I feel like you have to, right? I mean, because the thing that we've learned, if anything, um, in the NBA is that it's a superstar league. You know, look at the Heat versus the Lakers. The Heat had a great team, great culture, but they didn't have. LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And at the end of the day, that's what won the championship, right? That's what won the Lakers a championship. So if you are trying to win a championship, you have to get superstar talent. And the question has remained, is Victor Oladipo a superstar talent? We've seen young stars emerge in the bubble, right? Like the Jamal Murray uh, kind of cohort, Donovan Mitchell. Oladipo isn't there yet. I'm not saying he can't get there. It's just right now he's not there. One year left on the deal. I don't know if he's going to get there in one year. I feel like you have to trade, you know, trade them out and get somebody who can get you there. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Look, he did it for that one season, right? He had the one breakout season right after the trade where he was kind of a not a throw in, but he was like, oh, they traded Paul George for him. And then you broke out and you're like, oh, yeah, I trade Paul George for him. Like he had that <laughs> year. But then came the injury and the, the torn quadriceps tendon, and he has not been the same guy since. He is reportedly I, look, looking for big money in that next contract. I don't know that I want to be. The team chasing him as a free agent that has him on the roster and feels they've got to bring him back because he's got a lot to prove that he's worth that kind of money now, right? Like he's got to show me he's worth that. I would be testing the market just to see, like you said, they've got to find, they've got a good team. They've got, you know, but between Miles Turner and Sabonis up front and, and, you know, Brogdon, like there's a nice TJ Warren, there's a nice roster there, but they don't have that alpha. And I'm not sure Victor Oladipo can be that guy. My, I just think about going into the bubble and how, you know, Oladipo was like, maybe I'm going to play, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not going to travel, maybe I am. Then he goes and he's like, maybe I'm going to play, maybe I'm not. Then he ends up playing. You know, if that's your guy, that's your leader, right? To me, I'm just kind of confused as far as, and once again, I don't know what's happening inside closed doors, but just from the outside looking in, I'm like, that's not a very good look for if you're the number one of that team. You know, you got to be there at the very least, at least, in, uh, and show leadership with your presence and show leadership with your words. And you got to you got to be able to give that team certainty and direction if you are, in fact, the number one superstar of that team. And I just didn't see that um, this this season from Oladipo. No, and there's been rumors that he wants out, that he was looking to be traded. He's denied those, but like, let's say that buzz is around the league. The problem is everybody else has seen what you and I saw the last year and a half, which is I don't know how much I'm giving up for him on a one-year deal. Like he might fit as an interesting piece if you add him as the third playmaker for the Clippers, or you bring him to a team where he's got to be the second or third guy on a really good team. But I don't know that he's that number one guy anymore. And I don't know if you're going to be able to get, I don't know what Indiana's going to be able to get for him in this market. I'm just not sure that the other teams are looking at him thinking, despite the relatively big name, like, I just don't know that they think they're going to be able to find anybody. Mm. Only time will tell. <laughs> Talking about one of the teams that maybe could have interest in him. It's official now. Tyron Liu is the head coach of the Los Angeles Clippers. We talked about how we like this hire. I mean, you like it, right? Like this is, he moves up one chair, but this seems like it keeps some continuity in the organization while making a change. 
Yeah, and that that was the key that we talked about last time, Kurt. You know, you have basically, you know, one of the best rosters in, in basketball. In my personal opinion, you have what two fifth man, sixth man of the years, right? <laughs> like next to each other. And then you have two bona fide superstars, you know, in Kawhi and Paul uh Paul George. So from my perspective, I'm like, what can they really do differently? Um, they needed to make a change, as you, as you kind of mentioned, and they wanted to kind of second round exit isn't acceptable for that organization. And although I love Doc Rivers, you know, I love how they're staying within the organization. Coach Lou has obviously shown that he can work with superstars. You only got one, basically one more year with that team together. So you're going to need someone who has the continuity, but then has that kind of soft leadership skills to get them to that next level where everyone feels um like a part of the team and that they can help the team win and, and they're comfortable with their roles. So I think that this is an awesome high, uh, hire for the Clippers and I can't wait to see what Coach Lou puts together. I'm with you, by the way. I think that what he brings is a, a different voice than the Clippers have had, even if there's not going to be. I don't know how much you tactically can change who they are. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George working really well in isolation. Like this team is kind of locked into who – Lou Williams is Lou Williams. If they re-sign Montrezl Harrell, Montrezl Harrell is Montrezl Harrell. Like, he has great chemistry with Williams. But again, like you kind of are what you are. What they need is better locker room chemistry. It was a little tense in there. There were factions within the, why does Kawhi get so much time off? And then he, don't you just have to get these guys on the court, right? Like, you yeah. just got to get them. The Lakers, for all our jokes about, you know, oh my gosh, Rondo and Paul J and, and JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard all in one locker room. This is crazy. LeBron's leadership was there, but also they took the regular season seriously, right? Like they played good defense from the start. They focused on building good habits from the start. And in the end, that paid off for them in huge ways when diff every night a different, you know, it was called Well Pope one night and it was Rondo mm -hmm. another night. Different guys stepped up. The Clippers just never built that level of chemistry. And I think that that's one thing Ty Lue's got to find a way to do on and off the court. He's got to, and, you know, I'm not saying you take them all out bowling for a night or go to some <laughs> truck camp somewhere for corporate retreat. Like, but you've got to find a way to build this team into a real team. And I think Lou, he has the gravitas to come in and be able to do that. Yeah. And, and like you mentioned before with the Lakers, right? LeBron has been to how many finals, you know, like what, 10 or something crazy. And so, yeah. I mean, how many, and look at that team, you know, how, how many finals has Kawhi been to? Uh, how many finals has Paul George been to? So when you're talking about, if you're going to do that, you know, not everyone's going to be on the court at the same time, or let's kind of take the regular season to figure out who we are in our voice. You kind of need a LeBron who knows how to turn it on later in the season, who knows what it takes um, during that season so that they can he can shepherd the process. So when you actually get into the playoffs, you're like, okay, look, I know we haven't all played together, but we understand what our roles are. We understand how to help each other win. And this has been the message of the team going forward. Let's win a championship, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if you don't have 10 finals under your belt, it's just hard. It's just experience, right? It's just world world experience. And, and he had that. And I don't think the Clippers necessarily had that. So that's why it fell apart in the second round. It's just, you know, how do you get to that next level with, with, with limited experience in, in, the, in the playoffs? Obviously, Kawhi is just – unbelievable but the rest of those guys right right the other thing Kawhi is reportedly asking for a more pure point guard on this roster that he wants another playmaker in there and I think there's some logic to that right like again we were saying he's an isolation kind of guy he gets to his spots but he doesn't really run a lot of pick and roll Paul George can run some but a true playmaking shooting point guard somebody who could be more of a floor general makes a lot of sense, gets more guys involved, gets this team flowing, and takes some pressure off of Leonard to kind of have to take over the scoring at points. I like the idea of getting that guy. I'm just, you know, they're going to have to make a trade. I'm not exactly sure who they can get for that. But I think there's some real logic to that idea. Oh, yeah, Kurt, you, you hit it around the head. I mean, when you have a great point guard, it just makes the game easier for everyone. Yeah. And when you have two superstars who you think about when Super Bowl starts, when a superstar has the ball, you know, the defense is going to coll collapse on them and you look out to hit an open shooter, right? Or the superstar goes to work on a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-one. -on -one. So when you have like just basic kind of numbers game, if you have a great point guard who can execute that offense, move the ball around, make make the defense guess, um, and give not only the superstars a little more leeway as far as, you know, how much time and space that they have, but then also all the other role players just opens it up because there's more facilitators. That's going to make the Clippers offense, uh, you know, a million times better. So, I think it makes a lot of sense from a basketball perspective. I do too. They might have to take on some salary to do that, but I'm going to let you in on a secret, Corey. 
Steve Ballmer can afford the extra salary. He can, he can swing that somehow if he has to. And I feel like you don't need like a like an all NBA point guard. You just need you know you just yeah. need someone who can uh, open up the offense. So I feel like you don't need to spend a ton of money to get someone like Chris Paul. You know you can you can get someone good because um, you have Kawhi and Paul George. Speaking of trades, I want to ask you, Corey, a question. Which of these three players do you think is most likely to be on another team next year? James Harden, Russell Westbrook, or Chris Paul? I mean, I, I got to say Chris Paul. Right? I, I feel like that's the, that's the answer. What about you? What do you think? I, I think it's Chris Paul because I think you're going to see Oklahoma City. With Billy Donovan, we talked about this. With Billy Donovan moving on, it's a sign that it's time. Like, they had this kind of bounce back year. It changed their trajectory a little bit on how they're going to rebuild. But the fact of the matter is the rebuild is coming there. They have a zillion picks coming up over the next <laughs> few years. They've got this. They're just, you know, from that, from that Paul George trade, from everything else, they are loaded for the rebuild. Sam Presti's as good at that as there is, but it's going to take some time. And you can get a lot back for Chris Paul. His value is not going to get higher after this season. Yeah. And the thing about Chris Paul too is, you know, obviously he, basically single-handedly beat all the odds, right? Took that team far into the playoffs, which was shocking. Um, but I, I think when you look at the actual number of his salary, was it, he's owed like $41 million, $40 million exactly. next year. So that, got, I think... He's got, I believe the number's $87 million over the next two years guaranteed, something close to that. See, and that I think that is the only question is, okay, he's 35, 36, he has $87 million guaranteed over the next two years. Which team wants to pick that up? Um and if you have a taker or two, wonderful. But I think that's the only kind of trade, uh, the hitch in the trade concept for, the, for for OKC. Yeah, they can't just trade him for picks and young players. Like, you're going to have to take back some some ugly contracts. But you, you're in a position to do that, too, if you're really starting to rebuild. Because if you're moving him, right, you're moving Steven Adams. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're starting to think about what's next and who you're building around. So you've got Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's spectacular. Schroeder. You know, you've got young players. So you, You've got the start of this. You're going to need to take on more. I think that, though, this also kind of talks about the Rockets, that we're two Rockets on that list. James Harden, they're not moving. Tillman Fertitta mm -hmm. came out. They're not blowing this up. They still want to win a championship. Can they with Russell Westbrook, though? I mean, I honestly think they'll test the market for Westbrook. I'm not sure that they can move him because he's another guy owed more than $30 million a year for a few years out. But I'd look. Really? You would look – wow, you would look to deal, Russ? Yeah. I don't – I'm just I, – can you – can he and Harden win a title together? If that's your goal, how good are you with them? I, they might be the sixth best team in the East next year – or West next year, I mean. Oh, yeah, the West is just <laughs> yeah. – the West is just crazy. Wow. That's just crazy, yeah, with the Warriors coming back and everything. But that's – I mean, look, like I said, I think the NBA is a game of superstars, right? You have two of the best players in the world on the same team. The question is, can you just put people around him uh, and put him in, in in a structure that works? And people were thinking with D'Antoni, okay, let's play small ball, but they can't play defense. They showed that they can play defense in you know the playoffs. They played actually amazing defense. Um, actually, yeah, it was actually incredible to see. But the problem was that Russell Westbrook was a you know turnover machine during the playoffs, and that was problematic. Uh, and they couldn't close out. So I think from my perspective, I wouldn't separate them. I would do anything I could to put the pieces around them to be successful. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like I think they can win together personally, but it reminds me of like the old Spurs team with George, uh, with Iceman, George Gervin, because think about George Gervin as a player. He was spectacular to watch phenomenal score. He could just score at will. And that those teams in the early seventies were just scoring title. They, they won every scoring title, was back to back to back. And George Gervin was doing incredible things, but they never won. Right. And that's kind of where the Rockets are right now is what James Harden is doing is revolutionizing the game. It's no question about it. Like he has changed the game of basketball and it's wonderful to watch. Everyone around the league is stealing his moves. Like <laughs> This is like what he's done is crazy. It's actually just unprecedented, but it's not translating to titles. Um, but I think the effect of the James Harden Rockets era, Daryl Morey era, will be felt for decades, decades to come, just like Iceman um, opened the way for so many great scores that we've seen today. I think that you've got it. The, the legacy of Daryl Morey is, by the way, he gets all the analytics, right? He kind of became the face of analytics in the NBA. He became the guy who, hey, that's the guy who's the numbers guy, whatever. 
And he did that. He went and found players. He tried to use, you know, look, they shoot threes. They get to the rim. They don't take mid-rangers except for Russ now, but he should take them because he's pretty good at them. Like, the other part of that, though, is all the numbers pointed to, you got to go get stars. Like, it pointed to the classic conventional wisdom that you can't win without elite players. He found one in James Harden. And you got to give him credit, by the way. Remember, when they traded for him, he was the sixth man in the third wheel in OKC. Mm-hmm. And Daryl Morey said, that guy can be more than that. And he's revolutionized the game with it. I think that Daryl Morey has this huge imprint on the game, when or not, kind of like, in a way, like Mike D'Antoni, his coach there for a while, where he doesn't have a title, but the game is totally different because of him. Yeah, and then the question is, can you, you know, what, I guess, what legacy, would you rather have a ring or, you know, change the game? I, I prefer both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always nice. But, yeah, no, it, it's been it's been a, a incredible ride in Houston for, for them. So, look, I think they can make it happen. I think Harden and Westbrook can, but like I said, you just need, you just need, some other pieces around them that can that can help them out, you know. And it's going to be hard. They're boxed in. It's going to be an interest financially. They're boxed in in Houston. It's going to be interesting though. There's going to be trades. There's going to be guys like Victor Oladipo. And you want a sneaky name to watch? Watch Aaron Gordon and maybe Evan Fournier out of Orlando. There, I'm just saying that team may pivot from we're a really expensive eight seed to moving some guys around and changing who they are. So there's look with a dead free agent class. And, and not a great draft. If you're really going to improve next year, you're going to have to do it through trades. A lot of teams are keeping their powder dry for the 2021 free agent class, but expect some moves. Like expect some teams to try to dump some salaries and make some changes. And there'll be some there'll be some interesting offseason trades as there always is in the NBA, Corey. <laughs> I tell you, it's the reality TV show, NBA offseason. It's just unbelievable every year. I can't wait to watch this season. Yeah, it's a little off. It's a little weird to be talking about it into November and December, but we will be doing just that, buddy. I can't wait.